evening. Today we are gathered for the purpose of dissing the radio personality Howard Stern. We are here because he has some very bad traits we need to point out. We need to show. We need to speak out against. Thus, anyone here today is welcome to diss our Stern. I would like to tell why I believe Howard Stern is not a good person, why his show is not a good show. Unfortunately, one time on a bus ride, I had to listen to his movie. It was very unfortunate. I had no choice because I needed to go on the bus ride. People there wanted to watch that movie. It is appalling when we ponder what Howard Stern does. Perhaps the most egregious doing of his is making fun of people with disabilities. One of his favorite people to make fun of is Stuttering John. Certainly, it's hard enough for people with stuttering problems to make it in the world. There's enough stigma. They have enough shame. They have enough difficulties the way it is. Then, this person has nothing better to do than to make fun of people who stutter. Seems really horrendous. Very, very bad taste. Why does he do that? Why do people listen to that? Why do people reinforce him doing that? I think it's really sad. I also hear he occasionally gets in trouble with the Federal Communications Commission. Although I am surely an advocate of free speech, I believe Howard Stern is not something we should be supporting. We shouldn't necessarily censor him by the government, but we also shouldn't send him our money. On one webpage I found out Anheuser-Busch financially supports him. Isn't that great? They already do enough bad that they're supporting someone of his nature. It's very sad. Very, very sad. What is redeeming on Howard Stern? I haven't heard much. He's not inspirational. He's one of these types of people who have this big front, who won't see their vulnerabilities, who have to be tough, make fun of other people all the time. He's not a nice person. He's really sad. One time, I also had to hear him blab about the war in Iraq. Someone called in his show expressing their view there might be problems with going to war with Iraq. He, he said, we should be peaceniks. We should bomb. He said we should bomb in a very militant way. I wonder about some of these people who are so gung-ho about bombing. If they really believe that, why aren't they in the military? Why are, It's easy to say, I'm, we should be bombing, but when you actually have to bomb yourself, that's another story. I think it would be great for him to join the military. It would be great to have someone cut his ego apart. It would be great to have someone tell him to shut up. It would be great to see him put it, be put in his place because nobody else is doing it. He's not a person that inspires anyone. He's not a person who offers any hope or promise. I don't see any redeeming value. Once upon a time, 
H. L. Mencken said, when you're defending free speech, you should have a work of art to defend it with, not some miserable piece of garbage. It makes you look bad when you have a piece of garbage, but when you're defending a work of art, it looks great. People want to censor are looking bad. When we have people on the lines of Two Life Crew, Howard Stern, going against the censors, people are more, might be more inclined to accept the censors' view because what they're offering doesn't have redeeming value. It should have redeeming value. It's okay to have humor, it's okay to make jokes, but when you get your kicks, when your whole purpose is making fun of those who are the most vulnerable, it's a very sad situation. Other people have criticized him because of the graphic descriptions of sex he provides on his show. Also, his whole demeanor. Some people believe he, he just does what he does what he does just to shock people, hence the term shock jock, which is probably not the most noble motivation in the world. You're motivated mostly just to shock or appall people. That seems misguided to me. I believe this reflects the mainstream media in general, it reflects how very sad we are, what we watch, what we listen to. I've heard his program is one of the best rated programs out there. What does that tell us about America? But Howard Stern is one of the best rated programs. Number one, it's not intellectual. Number two, it's not sensitive, compassionate, kind, or just. Number three, it's not creative either. Too bad we cannot do better than Howard Stern. Too bad he's on the air. Rush Limbaugh is often paired with him as another shock jock. At least there is something of merit with Rush Limbaugh. At least there's something you can take. He may actually get you to think. He at least discusses political issues. That involves the brain. Certainly, he has his own problems, but compared to Howard Stern, he is a giant. Compared to Howard Stern, he is someone who is sensitive, someone who is wise. His program is something amazing compared to Howard Stern. It is really too bad people are so focused on this type of activity. He's also very crude. I don't particularly care for crudeness. I don't understand why he has to do that. It seems juvenile. What he, what he has on his show seems to be the type of activity we may or may not have liked when we were in sixth, fourth, third, second grade. Recently, Mad Magazine did a very good parody about Howard Stern. It's very funny, very appropriate, very fitting. It's good they're willing to make fun of him. They're willing to show his flaws, his problems. I saw one website from a Christian perspective that was encouraging people to boycott Howard Stern. Unfortunately, I don't believe people have enough fortitude to boycott. They don't have enough strength to resist. But they should. They really should. Since, as I said before, censorship is not a good mode, it's not a mode I prefer, boycott 
is probably what's left to do. Advocates of boycott stress the fact the boycott is very powerful because in the capitalist society money drives. Thus, if you take money away from Howard Stern, he may crumble because they say it's all based on the number of listeners. People stop listening to Howard Stern, advertisers pull their money out. They say thus, he's more inclined to cave in to what is right. I believe that's often a great way to change. I saw one transcript where he was just saying swear words to protest the FCC's ruling against him. Certainly, I am one of the biggest opponents of the Federal Communications Commission. They're no friends of mine. But it seems it seems really sad he's protesting something that's pretty pretty minute. Something that's pretty petty. Sure, swearing. Sure, a person, I believe a person should be allowed to swear. Personally, I don't. I try not to swear. I don't like to have swear words in my vocabulary. But I believe the government should censor that. Reminds me of when I had a radio station, what I was protesting, what I was censored for. To me, what I was censored for was a lot more noble than what Howard Stern was censored for. When I had my radio show, they got on me because I read a poem against the Federal Communications Commission called I Hate the FCC. That was really offensive to the people. In the poem, I expressed political sentiments about why I believe the FCC was wrong. This occurred my sophomore year of college, which was 1998. It's really sad. That furthered my anti-media view because the FCC putting pressure on these radio managers that they would not allow someone to criticize them. I thought that was horrible. That, I believe that was a good way to protest the FCC, to have political arguments straight at home. A poem, to me, has something of value. It takes creativity to write a poem. But Howard Stern, instead of doing that, he is doing all these horrible deeds. Also, we should point out, he does have talent. But he's using his talents for purposes that are not too good. He should be using his talents to help people, to make lives better. But he chooses not to do that. It is really quite sad very sad that he is there. Nobody else is really taking him on. You see people here and there. Thus, it, it's very fitting, very appropriate. We are gathered here today to diss Howard Stern, to show what is wrong with him, to have a forum to talk about why Howard Stern is to be feared. He's certainly very powerful. He certainly rakes in millions of dollars. Consider that aspect. We've all heard people complain about how these celebrities, Michael Jordan, Oprah Winfrey, make millions of dollars. Salaries that it would take social workers or teachers many lifetimes to earn what they have earned. Thus, people argue that's a very distorted scale. Michael Jordan is earning all this. These social workers are earning this when social workers are contributing to society. It's even more scary when you put Howard Stern into the picture. Michael Jordan 
has some very positive aspects. But he's a very hard worker. In a way, he's a good role model for you because you can see what can happen if you don't quit, if you believe in yourself, if you try hard. Oprah Winfrey, in some ways, is a good role model, too. Some of these other, But Howard Stern is not a good role model. Howard Stern is the opposite of a role model. He is someone we should not emulate. I'm not confident he will ever change his ways. One of those web pages wanted us to pray for him. I don't have faith that that's going to happen anytime soon. That's just the way people are. Often people are very resistant to change. I don't think he will have a change of heart. Long ago in Bad Magazine, they had another piece that was very funny about Howard Stern. They had a cartoon where this one young man was dating Howard Stern's daughter. This young man was saying something very vulgar what he wanted to do with Howard Stern's daughter. Their, their comic part was that was the payback for him teaching all these young people to view women, to view sex in that way. Thus they were saying what well, goes around comes around. He's teaching you to be this way to ultimately come back at him. I'm glad that they, Mad Magazine, are willing to go fun at him. I believe satire can be very powerful. Sometimes merely expressing a view does not have the same effect as some brilliant satire. A satire which demonstrates the utter failures, inconsistencies, flaws, absurdities, ironies of people's positions and views. I would encourage everyone not to watch Howard Stern, not to listen to Howard Stern. He is part of what is wrong with mainstream media. He is part of why, as Julia Butterfly Hill would say, the mainstream media is a beast. We have better tasks to do, better ways to fill our time than to watch Howard Stern. May Howard Stern's program fall apart. Something better arise in his place. Good evening.